Today I want to build this pipe connector that will connect two horizontal pipe and a smaller vertical pipe into one piece. So first thing first I want to use this technical drawing in my advantage and then and, and make my sketching easier. So I divided this model into total three parts. The first part would be the main pipe, the horizontal one. The second part would be the top one, the top smaller pipe. And the third part would be the particle flanges on the sides. So these three parts of this object, it's kind of like different from each other. For the first part, I want to use the revolve in my advantage. And you will see I'm only sketching half of the object because I want to create a half revolve and then mirror it on the other side. In this process, I'll be building the flanges as well. So the flanges will be built through the revolve process. However, the flanges will not have the, the holes for the for its, uh, nuts and bolts. So we'll talk about it when we do it in the later in the process. For now, so I'm building this sketch for the bulb and then I want to mirror it to build the whole pipe. However, this whole pipe will not have the hole for this particle smaller pipe that will come down. So the sketch is done. I want to use it to make the half pipe the revolve will be along the uh, x-axis because it's horizontal there the half the half pipe is there the flanges doesn't have any holes for the bolts I can use the mirror option and the mirror it against YZ plane to create the whole pipe the horizontal section is done now as I said this one does not have the hole for the vertical pipe to come in. We can do that when we actually build the vertical pipe. So let's focus our attention on the vertical pipe. I will also use revolve here. But as you can see, the flange on this pipe is not circular. It's something else. It, it's a rectangle or, or square. We'll see when we go there, but it's not circular. And if it's not circular, we cannot use revolved to build that part in this process so what i will do is i will just only build the wall of this pipe and you'll see let me uh, back up and then actually not do the flange on, on, on this process also making it exact match with this horizontal pipe that we built it to me it's kind of tough i could do that but it's not worth spending the time. What I'm going to do is I will make it extend uh, down a little bit more and then I will make the cut. That way um, I, it will be an exact match when I make the cut. When I'm building it, I don't have to worry about making an exact match. So there, the, the sketch for the revolve is completed, fully constrained. I can use it now. The, this time the revolve will be against the y-axis so we have our smaller pipe built into this horizontal pipe the bigger pipe now actually i can make the cut before i do that i want to make this mirror the first mirror one piece now i can make the cut not make the cut actually i wanted to do the connect part see so if, if i made the cut uh it it, it might not be the best thing to do but in this case connect makes it much easier for us to actually build it now I am struggling visibly to use this technical drawing to relocate it where I want because I want to use that in my advantage to build the top flange and let me tell you it took me a minute to actually sort this thing out uh, but eventually I did it I used it in my advantage 
and I I want to place this sketch exactly where it will start so I want to build the pad from the bottom up and, and that's why I'm making some calculations to actually offset this sketch right now and turns out to be 110 millimeter so this sketch will be at 110 millimeter from the center of this, this horizontal pipe and then I will build it upwards to match with the top of this existing smaller particle pipe you will see this the vertical pipe that I already built using revolve has a smaller notch uh, already built in to the inner side so I don't want to redo it or like negate that effect when I build this flange I'll be using the connect tool again uh, later in the process so this inner rectangle will be the boundaries for those not um, holes these four holes on the four corners and and then the sketch is pretty much easy just puts uh, one dimension and make it equal, equal on the both sides and so pretty pretty standard small uh, sketch here once that outside is constrained I'll have to focus more on those four tiny uh, nut holes yeah um, the the inner re square that I placed as construction geometry really helped me tie this place these uh, holes down and that constrains everything now I'm ready to make this extrusion on this sketch let me tell you one thing this extrusion this reverse button it does not always play right in my mind so I always have to go back and then adjust this reverse button to actually bring the pad where I want to and finally it's there so this pad actually covers the hole as well so making a cut um, may require one more step to for it to work perfectly but using this connect tool and uh, that there it makes things way simpler so there the main part of this joint this pipe connect is is done 95 percent done now i want to focus on these nut holes for these vertical flanges that i skipped in the first part you see we have to build six 18 millimeter diameter holes two of them are particularly aligned on the right side but on the left side the number of the holes are same however the the alignment is different the vertical aligned holes are pushed left side by 45 degree angle so these two are not equal so we cannot build one and then mirror it on the other side we will have to build them separately and i plan to do that using lattice tool in association with this part uh, workbench so i'll be building this sketch here and then instead of building six circles I will be using lattice two workbench to replicate them um, so as you can see uh, I'm using polar array and let me actually update the element number to six I want to make that count six that's six many holes I want and then this time I will be replicating this sketch not the extrusion so I want to replicate that and they are not where I want them to be it's an easy fix I'll have to update the origin of the of this um, lattice and that took me a second to find it but it's right there it's right there all the way to the end it says referencing origin just change it back to first item there makes it easier I believe I could use polar array options to to change this planner uh, placement too but hey if one is working why bother looking for other options so I build this sketch as an array now I can go ahead and then extrude that by the thickness of the flange which happens to be 22 uh, millimeters there the reverse button 
update the reverse button and it gets inside the flange now i can ready I'm, i can make the cut to make those holes easy peasy so essentially i'll have to do the same thing on the other side however the only one tiny minor difference is i'll have to place that first sketch at an angle with the vertical axis so that's the only difference and and the rest of them would be kind of like similar so let's go ahead and build that circle place it somewhere there yeah these auto constraints sometimes become confusing and the best way to apply the angle is to actually draw a constraint uh, the construction geometry a line and then assign the angle between this line and the vertical axis which would be 45 degree so take these two lines assign the angle 45 degree and also don't forget to assign a diameter to this hole that's a note to myself 18 millimeter I was trying to see what if I wanted to do it differently, a little bit different this time. So I went ahead and then made this extrusion before I, I did the replication using lattice 2 and change the origin. It gives, it produces the same end result. So if, if I wanted to replicate this sketch, I could do that. If I wanted to replicate the extrusion, I could do that. It comes down to same thing. I hope you enjoyed this process of building this semi-complex connect tool with to uh, paying attention to all the details. Thank you for watching.